Double click on the feed form and shortcut icon on your desktop. Feed Foreman automatically creates a shortcut when installed. In this case, using Windows 7, we went ahead and tagged the icon to our taskbar. The default username is user1. User is all lowercase. When loading the program, you can contact Valley Ag to create a custom username and custom password. The password is left blank by default, unless you have created a custom password at the time of loading the program. Press OK. On your left, you will see the key categories. Pins, recipes, ingredients, reports, equipment, and utilities. Each category has its own subcategories, which we will discuss in further detail later. Feedform PC utilizes an intuitive Windows-based layout that can be customized to meet your preferences. When you select a category or subcategory, you will notice three tabs in the top left, below the main Windows bar. My Layout, VAS Layout, and Print Form. VAS Layout is the default layout programmed by Valley Ag Software. We are using the Pin Summary tab as an example on how to create a custom layout. The Inputs tab covers up part of the Identification tab. To make data input easier, we simply left click and drag the inputs tab down. When in position, release the left click. Resize the box by going to a corner and left clicking on the double arrow. You can save this layout by going to My Layout and selecting Save. To load the default VAS layout, simply go to VAS Layout tab and select Load. To return to our custom layout, go to My Layout and select Load. The last saved layout now appears. You are now ready to enter in your operations details. The best category to start with is equipment. Select the equipment summary tab. Left click on the settings tab. Move it over then resize the box so you can see everything in the settings and the equipment tab. Go to my layout and hit save. Feed Foreman is designed to work with one mixer. If you use multiple mixers on your operation, you will need to upgrade to FeedWatch. Enter the name for your mixer. You can also add an optional description. The best default equipment type setting for Feed Foreman is Mobile Mixer. This is the best setting to track which pin is fed, even if you are using a stationary mixer. The other equipment type options are used in FeedWatch. Check the AWT display box. This indicates you are using the Avery Waitronics XLR12 remote display. Check the touch scale box. This indicates you are using the 3060 touchscreen indicator. If you are using the optional RD40RF remote display in the loader, check the box RD40. If you have a TrioLA mixer and want to take advantage of the Shiftronic gearbox, you will need to dedicate COM port 2 to this and will not be able to use a RD40RF in your loader. You are now ready to enter the equipment settings. Kilograms and pounds are set through the 3060 touchscreen. If you want to operate in kilograms, simply enter all weight parameters in kilograms. If you want to operate in pounds, simply enter all weight parameters in pounds. All parameters are recommended starting points. You can easily adjust the parameters from suggested starting points to meet your operations preferences. The first category is the minimum scale detect. This is the smallest total ingredient weight you want the scale to sense. If the required total ingredient weight goes below this number, then you will receive a message on the indicator display. The indicator will not switch to the next ingredient until you hit the advanced button. The minimum scale detect is awesome set at 50 to reflect the smaller size of the many hand add ingredients. The next category is a mixed drop capacity and, and premix capacity. This sets the largest load amount you want to allow your mixer to batch. By setting the max capacity, it will discourage employees from trying to batch loads that will stress your mixer or not mix the ingredients thoroughly. Drop pounds message and ingredient pounds message percentage. Ingredient pounds message percentage is the time the ingredient message will scroll before switching to the mode of alternating between ingredient and weight on the remote display. A default of 10% is recommended for the setting. Ingredient message pounds percentage is the percentage of weight required which will trigger the indicator display to only display the weight and not the ingredient also. For example, if the batch calls for 2,000 pounds of corn silage and the setting is set at 25% for ingredient pounds message percentage, only the weight will be displayed once the target of 500 pounds, which is 25% of the 2,000 total. 
a setting of 25% is recommended as a starting point. Minimum mix capacity and minimum premix capacity is the minimum amount that you will allow the equipment to mix. 1,500 to 2,500 pounds is often a good starting point for this setting. Drop message time and ingredient message time. This is the amount of time in seconds that the low drop instructions will scroll across the display. After this time frame, the display will alternate between the ingredients and the target weight. 15 seconds is a good starting point for this setting. Low done pounds. This only affects the last drop on a load. This is the number of pounds Feedform and PC will consider the drop to be done and take the user back to the load menu. This number is determined by how well your mixer cleans out. If you usually have 100 pounds left in your mixer after you're done feeding, then you can enter in 100 in this category. Most mixers fall in the setting range of 75 pounds to 150 pounds. Load horn factor. Trigger point that will start the alarm when a certain number of pounds are hit. Set to zero if you're not using a self-loading mixer. Drop horn pounds. When dropping to a pin, this trigger will turn on the alarm when the weight falls below the drop horn pounds target. This can be set as a signal to close the gates on the mixer. If you know the mixer drops 250 pounds in the time it takes to close the gate, you can set this parameter at 250 pounds. If you want to turn the alarm off, enter in a zero or a negative number. LED scroll speed. This is the rate at which the information scrolls on the outside remote display. 1 equals slowest, 5 equals fastest. A setting of 2 is a good starting point. Rounding pounds. What the scale counts by when showing weight. The most common parameters are 5 or 10. This overrides the counting division settings that are derived from the 3060 calibration number. Ingredient timestamp percentage and drop timestamp percentage. Percent of target weight loaded or unloaded in which feed form and PC will establish the start time for the feed history reports. Location display. This option is only active in feed watch. This displays the ingredients locations after the ingredient name. Once all settings have been entered in for your equipment, click save. The next category to set up is pins. Select the pin summary tab under the pins category. It is recommended to move the Inputs tab so you can fully view the Identification tab. Once you have the Inputs tab where you want it, go to My Layout and select Save. Click on the New button to add a pin. The ID tab is automatically generated by Feed Form and PC. Enter in a pin number that is unique and not already used under the number column. Enter the pin name. This can be pin 1, milk cow 1, or any other type of name that is 12 characters or less that makes sense for your operation. This will be the name that will display on the indicator and the remote display. Enter the feedings per day that this pin will receive. Enter a description for the pin. Description is optional. The checkbox selections are only active in Feed Watch. Go to the Inputs tab and enter in the head count in the count category. Go to the target DMI. Enter in dry matter intake per head per day for this pin. The weight and minimum drop quantity are fields that are only active in Feed Watch. The percentage adjustment will be used in the future when the pin's DMI needs to be adjusted up or down. Go to the Pin Types tab within the Inputs tab. Using the drop down arrow, select Default. Custom pin types can be assigned in FeedWatch. Now go to the Zones tab and using the drop down arrow, select Default. Custom zones can be selected in FeedWatch. Press Save. You are now ready to enter your next pin. Once all your pins are entered, you are now ready to enter your ingredients. Click on Inventory under the Ingredients section. Click on the New tab. Take the Chemistries tab, and when you see the double arrow, drag it lower. This will allow you to view the Base Cost tab and the Ingredient Settings tab. Once everything is set up the way you want it, go to My Layout and press Save. Enter the ingredient name. You can use any name 12 characters or less. This will be the name that appears on the indicator and the remote display. Select default under the drop down arrow for type. You can assign different types in Feed Watch. Use the drop down menu for reference to select the most relevant ingredient. This will give you default chemistry parameters for this ingredient. Entering a description is optional. Go to the Chemistries tab and select the Location tab. Use the drop down menu to select on no one. Locations can be assigned for complete inventory management in Feed Watch. Now go to the Chemistries tab and change the dry matter percentage to reflect your current inventory. Now go to the Base Cost tab. 
enter in the as fed cost per ton. Your dry matter cost per ton is automatically calculated now. Now go to the ingredient settings tab. The checkbox categories are only active in FeedWatch. You need to select the low tolerance for this ingredient. It is the amount of pounds you can be within your target amount that will trigger the auto advance to go to the next ingredient. For example, if the batch calls for 1,000 pounds of haylage and the low tolerance is set at 20 pounds, it will advance to the next ingredient once you've loaded 980 pounds or more. Select save and enter your next ingredient. Once all ingredients are entered, you are now ready to create a recipe. Click on the recipe summary tab under recipes. Select new. Go to the ingredients tab. When you see the double arrows, left click and drag it down. Then take the dry matter values and adds fed values and raise them up. Once you have everything laid out the way you want, go to my layout and press save. Navigate to the identification tab and enter the recipe name that is 12 characters or less. This will be the name that is displayed on the indicator and remote display. The description is only active in FeedWatch. Entering the density factor is optional. If you do not know the density factor, you can always enter it at a later date. If the recipe you are entering is a premix, check the premix box. Go to the ingredient section and under inventory use the drop down arrow to select the first ingredient. Now you are to enter the dry matter quantity or as fed quantity to feed. It is highly recommended to create rations using dry matter quantities. Whether you are using dry matter or as fed, the total quantity is based on the per head per day amount. If you want the ingredients to auto advance, be sure to have the box under the advance column checked. Go to the ingredients section and under inventory use the drop down arrow to select the second ingredient. Now enter in the dry matter quantity. Please reference how the dry matter and as fed values in those tabs change as you add additional ingredients. The delay column is the amount of time you set for the mix timer. In this case we set a delay of 10 seconds between each ingredient. This ensures that if any ingredient is still falling from the loader once the target is hit as opposed to auto advancing to the next ingredient, it will wait 10 seconds so any additional weight will be assigned to that ingredient and not the next one. After the last ingredient, you can enter a custom mix time. This total time will vary based on your mixer and nutritionist recommendations. In this case, we are setting the mix timer for 2 minutes. Once all ingredients and settings are entered, press save. You are now ready to transfer all data to the 3060 touchscreen so you can begin feeding. Go to the utilities menu and select scale export. Select next. Once the drive with the USB stick is selected, press next. All necessary files have been exported. Press finish.